Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the TerraMaster F2-223. Uh, it was sent over to me by TerraMaster to take a look at and share with you, but as a full disclaimer, they get no say about this video and no money exchanged hands. They just sent it over so I could take a look and share my experience with you guys. So first thing, let's take a look at the specs. It's got an Intel Celeron N4505 processor that is two cores and two threads. Now it's not much, but it does have Intel Quick Sync video to support smoother video playback. And we will get into that just a little bit. Now it also comes with four gigs of DDR4 RAM, but I have gone ahead and thrown in another four gigs. So there is a total of eight gigs in here, but depending on where you look, the SOC only supports up to 16 gigs anyway. So I think we'll be just fine. It's also got two three and a half inch hard drive bays. So I threw a couple of six terabyte drives in there and I ran them in RAID zero. Now look, I know that some people are going to have an issue with this, but I am just setting this up as a media server. So it'll be just fine. Also, we'll talk a little bit more about the media server stuff later on. The F2-223 also has two M.2 NVMe 2280 slots in it. And since I already had a couple of 256 gig drives laying around, I went ahead and put those in as M.2 cache drives to speed up access to the more frequent files on the device. There are also two two and a half gig uh, LAN ports on the device. So I really do dig that they've gone ahead and upgraded from the one gig to the two and a half gig ports on this device. And all of this is powered by a 40 watt power supply, but the TerraMaster data sheet says that it should idle around 12 watts and should probably max out somewhere around 22 watts, depending on the drives that you put in it. So with the specs basically out of the way, let's talk about what I'm doing with this device. I've got all of the hardware put together and configured in RAID 0, as I already mentioned. And of course, I've got those caching drives set up. So the next step was to get Plex installed on the device, which of course was very, very simple. They've got Plex uh, as an app that you can just one click install and be done with. Now, the reason that I'm putting Plex on this is because some of our friends have been remotely accessing our Plex server and it's been, well, it's been fine, but my Plex server is also running a low powered Terra Master device and the transcoding from my house to theirs isn't ideal. So to make it easier on everyone and to give everyone a better experience, they're gonna have their own Plex server ready to go. Now, for the sake of testing, I dropped about eight terabytes of media on this device for Plex. And overall, the whole process took about four days. Now, I wanna preface that by saying moving the data, that, that eight terabytes, copying that over took about a day, day and a half. And then the other part of that four days or so was Plex re-indexing everything to make sure that it had, uh, you know, all of the right uh, titles and descriptions and posters and all of that kind of stuff. So it, it, it worked, but it did take quite a bit of time to get all of that media uh, copied over and indexed. Hopefully though, we won't have to do that again anytime soon. So let's take a quick look at the Plex experience using the F2-223 uh, with the media that I've got loaded on it. Okay, so here we are on uh, one of my uh, TCL Roku smart TVs. And right down here, we can see we've got Johnson's fun box for movies and TV shows. Those. Uh, are on the new F2-223 uh, from TerraMaster. And uh, this is all being locally done. We're not doing any transcoding across the internet or anything like that. So let's just pick a random movie. We can see this is all brand new. We haven't uh, we haven't watched anything here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a movie at random. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and say play. If you haven't seen this movie, it's a great movie, The Artifice Girl. Uh, and just that quickly, uh, we're up and running. Everything's running really, really smoothly. Uh, in fact, you could see there was basically no delay from the time I clicked play until it was, you know, at 33.99 and playing for the percentages there. Um, so there's there's one movie. Let's actually go back um, just so we can kind of take another look at something else, another random. Uh, let's oops, let's do let's do Zombieland. Great, another great movie. I've always loved that cast together. Again, we're just gonna click play. Uh, none of this stuff has been played before. Uh, brand new setup here, 1333.99. And again, here we are. We are playing this movie just that quickly with no lag, no hiccups or anything like that. Uh, even though this is a low powered Intel processor, two cores, two threads, having that Intel video quick sync is amazing on a local network for streaming media. Okay, and here we are taking a look at the dashboard for that device playing Zombieland. Uh, we can see that it is a 720p direct play. Everything is direct play here. Uh, we've got our bandwidth, which looks just fine. 
and our CPU usage is effectively zero. Uh, we're using 25% of the 8 gigs of RAM. Um, so yeah, this thing is just chugging right along, and I think it's going to make a great media server for our friends. So we can see that the Plex media server works great on here, at least when we're on the same network and not having to do a bunch of trans coding. So while this is a low powered device with limited drive bays, I think that setting this up as a file server and a Plex server is kind of the sweet spot for this device. So one other thing to consider uh, is that because it's only two cores and two threads, as I mentioned before, it's going to be fairly limited. So I don't think that I would consider this a home lab candidate for things like Docker or uh, Proxmox or anything like that. I think file and media server is kind of, again, the sweet spot for this device. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the F2 223 and whether or not you would pick this up for yourself or a friend or family member who just needs a simple file server or even a, uh, maybe a low powered media server. I'd love to know all of your thoughts on that in the comment section down below. Also, of course, I will have links to the NAS and all of the hardware that I put in it in the description down below. I wanna thank TerraMaster for sending this over to review and share with you guys. And I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. And hopefully I'll talk to you in the next video.